Good afternoon. My name is Mr. Franson, and in this podcast, we're going to be covering the essentials of vocal pedagogy. Now, I know that pedagogy sounds like a scary technical word, but it's not nearly as scary as you may think. I'm simply going to be talking about how we sing properly. We'll cover five different areas of study in this podcast, such as posture, breathing, phonation, registration, and then we'll end with what to do and what not to do in order to maintain good vocal health. First, we begin with posture. What does good posture look like, and why is it important to have correct posture while singing? Let's begin by describing what good posture doesn't look like. From the time we sit up as babies, we are constantly learning bad posture. Whether we're playing video games, watching television, texting, eating a meal, or working on the computer or at our desks in school, it seems bad posture has become a part of our society. This is why sometimes it hurts us physically to sit up straight or to stand up straight. Our muscles and spine just aren't used to correct posture. As seniors, correct posture has to be a part of our daily lives. So let's talk about how we can create good posture. We'll begin with the feet. Spread your feet about shoulder width apart. Now I want you to sway side to side and slowly settle right in the middle. We're going to make sure that the weight of our bodies are spread evenly between the two feet. Moving up to your legs. Your legs are the support for your entire body. We want the legs to be flexible and ready to be moved. Now, it's impossible for our legs to be entirely relaxed, but we don't want rigidity in our legs. Rigid legs or locked knees will oftentimes lead to fainting. So whatever you do, don't lock your knees when you sing. Moving up to your hips, your hips should be comfortably tucked under and forward to conform to the vertical line drawn from your feet to your head. Your lower abdomen should feel that it is held comfortably in or that it is being pulled gently in. Your rib cage should be lifted at all times. If you put your hands straight up above your head and let them fall slowly to your side, as they near your legs, your rib cage will automatically be lifted. This is the feeling that you should sing in all the time. Your shoulders should be rolled gently back and allow your shoulders to settle into their sockets. Let your arms and hands relax at your sides, and your head should be directly in line with the rest of the body. The chin should be slightly tucked in rather than raising the chin, because a raised chin will cause tension in your throat. Now, tucked too much in will also create tension. So find a nice, comfortable position looking straight ahead with your chin tucked slightly in. That is the position that we want your head in. Now, one thing you should avoid at all costs is any kind of tension in your body. Tension in your posture will affect your sound as you begin singing. So that's why it's so important to have good posture because our bad posture will negatively affect how we breathe, and it will affect our sound. But good posture allows us to take full, deep breaths and support our sound while we sing. Next, we're going to discuss the breathing process. Now, breathing is a natural, unconscious process, and we take in about 23,000 breaths every day. Breathing for life has three steps, the intake of air, the release of air, and a recovery period where our muscles relax. Now, as singers, we use our breath to sing and sustain notes. The main difference in breathing for singing is the amount of conscious control. There are four steps in breathing for singing, inhalation, suspension, phonation, and a recovery period. Now, it sounds like there are 
two different steps in there, right? Well, suspension is actually a, a new stage. Phonation is actually just the exhalation. And we'll go into detail a little bit later. Now, if time permits, singers should always try to breathe through their noses in order to clean and warm and moisturize the air that they take in. However, we don't usually get that luxury uh, of, of a long break in our songs. So if we have to breathe through our mouth, we should try to breathe through our mouth and nose at the same time. Now, before we breathe, we as singers need to understand our anatomy and what is physically happening to us as we breathe. As we go into detail about our anatomy, please don't become overwhelmed. If you need to go back and listen again, please do. I personally believe that understanding what is happening will make it easier for you to take a full and correct breath. The primary muscles of breathing are the diaphragm, the intercostal muscles, and the abdominal muscles. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle that arches up into the ribs. The lungs connect to the top of the diaphragm. The central tendon is connected to the heart, and, the, and it is attached to the lumbar vertebrae in the back. Now, you've probably heard every music teacher tell you to breathe from your diaphragm and to make your stomach go out. This is actually a misconception. Your diaphragm actually moves down toward the pelvic floor. Now, nestled inside of the dome of the diaphragm is the viscera, which that's the contents of your stomach. And when you breathe, the dome of the diaphragm, diaphragm contracts downward and pushes the viscera out. Uh, and this is actually what you're seeing, not the diaphragm. It's the viscera being pushed out. The intercostal muscles are the next set of muscles we'll talk about. And these muscles run along your ribs and connect to the spine. These muscles are responsible for raising the ribs and lowering the ribs as we breathe. When we breathe in, the external intercostals will raise the ribs, creating more space for the lungs to expand. And then as we exhale, the internal intercostals will lower the ribs. The abdominal muscles form three layers. The first layer is the transverse abdominis. It's a horizontal running group of muscles that connect the pubic bone with the sternum and the lower ribs adjacent to the sternum. Also in this layer is the rectus abdominis. It's a vertical running group of muscles. And if you've ever seen uh, like a six-pack six abs or, or eight-pack abs, uh, these are the actual physical abs that you are seeing. Uh, the next layer are the internal obliques, and then the last layer is the external obliques. During inhalation, these abdominal muscles are passive. However, during exhalation, these muscles are, are working to bring the abdominal wall back to its resting state. Now, one group is, is working to hold the wall up. The other group of muscles is working to bring it back to its resting state. Now, these two muscles working against each other is called muscle antagonism. And in the Italian school of breathing, this concept is known as appoggio. And then this is where we get our idea of breath support. The expansion of our ribs and the descent of the diaphragm create a negative pressure or a vacuum inside of our thorax or chest cavity. This vacuum allows air to rush in and fill the lungs. The air goes down the trachea, which is a 5-inch elastic tube that descends right below the larynx, dividing the two bronchi that branch out into the lungs. As the air fills the lungs, the elastic walls expand. Now, during normal breathing, the lungs fill to about one pint of air. However, during deep breathing, the muscles can fill as, up to as much as four quarts. Now, as I mentioned before, there are four stages uh, breathing for singing, inhalation, suspension, phonation, and recovery. We've pretty much exhausted inhalation, so let's talk about suspension. Suspension is an important stage between inhalation and exhalation because it prepares the breath support mechanism for phonation. Uh, the next stage is phonation, uh, which is exhalation in coordination with the vocal cords. And we'll talk about more about phonation in the next section. Um, but you should know that the length of the exhalation stage is really determined by the length of the musical phrase that you're singing. Uh, the breath should be conserved as much as possible and released uh, as slowly as you need it to be.
The abdominal muscles are working during this process to, to slow the descent of the abdominal wall, like I said just a few minutes ago. Uh, lastly, the recovery stage is a brief moment where the respiratory muscles get to relax. Your intercostal muscles get to relax, your diaphragm relaxes, and your abdominal muscles relax. And it's very important to let your muscles relax in between, uh, in between phrases of songs. These muscles are just like every other muscle in your body. The longer you work these muscles uh, without rest, the harder it is to continue using them. The, if, if you are working your biceps out, uh, if you just continue to do curls, it's going to get really hard to continue to curl uh, a weight without resting in between. And next I want to talk to you about uh, actually taking a breath. And before we take the breath, I want to make sure your posture is correct. If it's not correct, go back to the posture shift posture section of this podcast and listen to it again. And once you have the proper singing posture, then you're ready to take a breath. I like to tell my students to pretend that they have a fragrant fragrant flower in their hand. Raise the flower to your nose and take a deep whiff of its smell. You should feel the expansion in your lower abdomen. Another good way to think of taking a full deep breath is taking a drink of air. Pretend that you have a a glass of air, and now put the cup up to your mouth and drink all of the air in. Again, you should feel the expansion in your lower abdomen. If you're having trouble visualizing or experiencing this sensation of your lower abdomen expanding, you should watch a video of a baby or a puppy or maybe even a kitten while they are sleeping you will see that they breathe naturally. Their stomachs will expand as they are breathing. You can also lay on your back and place a textbook on your lower stomach. And when you breathe deeply, your stomach will raise the book. So let's talk.